Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Good morning, everybody. Well, today is one of those days <laughs> where I either made a big mistake or a uh, savvy investment. I don't know which yet. But uh, about a week or two ago, I was out to somebody's house and I was buying some antiques and I noticed that the neighbor across the street had an old car. Well, I did what I do and I left my name and number, which is how you get this old stuff. I uh, left my name and number with the people who own the car and uh, made an offer and they called me back yesterday and accepted and today we're gonna go pick it up. Um, well, not in this vehicle we're gonna pick it up. We're gonna call a tow truck uh, and it's gonna pick it up and bring it back home. But let me show you what we picked up today. So this is the car. It's been sitting where it sits right now on this patch of driveway. Luckily it's on concrete or on, but it's been sitting here since 1984. So the story on this car is that uh, it's been in the family since new. So one owner family, um, it was originally this sort of blue color. It was turquoise blue, it was painted a pearl white back in the eighties. And uh, we're just, we've got the, the previous owners here because it's today's pickup day. He's trying to get some air in these tires and that one's that cold, I can hear it hissing. <laughs> we're trying to get it out a bit. And the tow truck's here already. Gosh, that was fast, okay. Well, with the tow truck being early, there's this extra pressure to try and get air in these tires. Gosh, I don't even know if this one's gonna hold or if I can get in there. So, when was the last time you saw this patch of concrete right here? <laughs> about August 15th, 84. 84, yeah, gosh, that's 40 years worth of leaves and uh, Making real dirt. Wait, is this, uh, is that part of my car? Should I take that with me? <laughs> the floorboards. Floorboards rust out on 56, 5, 6, 7. Oh yeah. No, I know she's going to need a little, a little more than just a little TLC, but. You know, the nice thing is it's a 150 body style. So it's the lower trim package, but I actually kind of like that. Um, which is probably a good thing. Because if it had all the trim that you'd get normally on a 57 Chevy, this side was hit. Uh, he was driving it to work in the 80s and a truck in his yard creamed the side. It, As I was saying, a truck hit the other side so that trim on the other side's all smushed in. Uh, I'm kind of staying out of the way right now because the uh, tow truck is here. I was hoping to show you guys a little bit more of it uh, sitting undisturbed after all those years but the tow truck like i said he's an hour and a half early so uh that's okay you guys get the idea sitting in that spot for about 40 years um it's got the six cylinder engine in it it's a three on the tree it's kind of a plain jane car but again it's a two-door post which makes it desirable we've got looks like there's a bunch of parts and bits and pieces in here so we'll get this home and then we'll go through and see what we got Okay, and just like that, this car that had been sitting there since 1984 is now on the back of a trailer. So I'll run ahead and make a space for you. Okay, perfect, because this will be fun backing in. Uh, yeah, I got a space right next to the garage for it, so okay. I'll get everything out of the way. Okay, sounds good. All right, see you in a bit. All right, we'll see you later. So there it is. Parked because of that dent on the side and left to rot. Time to go home and see exactly what I bought. Ooh, I arrived. Okay, so while the car was getting loaded up, I chatted with the owner of the vehicle and I learned a few things. One is his mom bought the car brand new here in Alberta, where I live. It came from Calgary. Uh, apparently they moved down to Arkansas for a few years and the car spent some time down there and then it came back. Um, it's been in the family, like I said, since brand new. Um, he was given the car as a young man. He drove it for a little while when he had one of his first jobs, which was working at a uh, uh, brewery. 
and uh, he had it painted sort of a pearl white metallic. It got hit by one of the uh, delivery trucks when it was in the parking lot and it got parked since then and that was back in 1984. Now, uh, in 1983, he had spent some money. He got the floorboards and the rockers redone. As you can see, they definitely need to be done again. Um, and the engine had re been rebuilt at that time. So I don't know what kind of shape the engine's gonna be in. It hasn't turned a key since 84. Um, coming on 40 years here as the filming of this. Um, so I don't know what to expect, but I'm going to uh, attempt to start that thing <laughs> and see if it runs. And uh, anyway, the tow truck's gonna be home soon, so we'll get home and we'll do a walk around and see exactly what we have there. Well, here it is. It's coming home. You know, if I look at it from back here, it doesn't look so bad. Until you start zooming in and see all the things not great about it. <laughs> but it's nearly a 70 year old car. So, uh, you know, if I sat outside for 70 years, I wouldn't look so hot. Melissa says if I sat outside for 70 years, I'd be a picked over skeleton by now. <laughs> so, you know, the fact it's still more or less intact is, I guess, a good thing. Um, anyway, I guess I should probably put the camera down for a minute and chat with the guy about where this car is going to go. There we go. Moving it back and it's close to its new home. See, you got, got a beauty ring on that tire still. And I'm actually shocked that those tires are somewhat holding air. I can see they've dropped down a bit, but you know, it's bias ply. The old bias ply tires like that, I don't know what, they, they made them out of much better rubber than they make the new stuff out of. They're not even cracking on the sides. I'm kind of excited to go through the boxes on the interior. You can see my rockers are pretty well shot. One problem we're having right now is that since the uh, back tire on the other side's flat, he can't get his bar out. So we're putting jack stands underneath, which is okay, because I'll just, uh, I'll probably take these wheels off and deal with that fairly soon so I can make it roll. Also got my pressure washer ready because one of the first things I'm going to do is start blasting some of this moss and lichen and stuff off. It's just, you know, feels like sandpaper right now. Okay, before I wash this thing down, this is the worst part right here. I think. Well, there's lots of worst parts, but look, this trunk has not been opened in almost 40 years. There's all this moss and stuff on top of it trunk lids all filthy so we'll do a little before and after here to show you guys what it looks like uh and then we'll empty out the interior before i before i start washing what i wanted to show you well a was how gross it is but also b okay we have an engine and we've got a really old battery obviously that's not going to work so um i'm going to spray this down and we'll get the engine washed off we'll get the car washed off and uh after it's dry i'll pull the plugs and put some penetrating oil in there let that sit and we'll clean up the interior let me grab some cleaner for in here okay i've sprayed down the engine with a little spray nine cleaner but i'm out of spray nine so i guess i'll have to be as good as it gets until i get some more but here we go first clean the engine washed down we'll let that dry and we'll start on the moss and all this other stuff that's building up on the paint here <music>
this for a while, you can see where I just stopped. I mean, there's a definite line here. But this moss is actually got depth to it and it's still very much alive. Um, I sprayed a little bit of uh, bleach on the, well, it, I shouldn't say bleach, but it's Lysol with a little bit of bleach in it on the trunk, hoping that'll loosen it up or start to kill it off a bit. But this is like, this car is no longer a car. It's like a living organism, but I am making some progress here. I am getting down. Um, finally, whatever paint they used, this white paint, they didn't actually put any primer on it. So the original blue is underneath there and the blue looks like it's actually held up better than the white. If I could find a way to get this white paint off, that original paint might not be too shabby, you know, other than the rust and the giant dent. Um, but the blue seems to have stood up much better than that white did. Anyway, I'm gonna continue cleaning and hopefully, gosh, I'll make a little more progress on this. One thing that was kind of a bonus with this car, I wouldn't say bonus, but it came with his old summer rims, which are old American racing uh, five spoke rims, um, kind of like what you see on the old Hot Wheels cars. Anyway, came with those. Um, so we're gonna throw them back on because they apparently are holding air and the ones that are on it are not. And my son is actually working on getting the wheel off right now. How's it going? Just a few more bolts? Yep, just a few more bolts. So we're gonna swap out all four. Yeah. And while he's been working on that, I've been going through the car, get, trying to get as much of the moss off as I can. And it is actually uh, cleaning up a fair bit. I mean, obviously I'm not trying to restore or keep this paint, but if I do go to sand it, I don't want to be sanding moss and lichen and all that other stuff into the paint. Um, again, that's going to be an issue. One thing I can work on while he's changing out the wheels. Where's the latch? There it is. This should be dry enough now. And it is that I can start pulling the spark plugs out and putting some penetrating oil in this engine. Well, first plug is out and actually doesn't look too bad i'm going to give it a little brush off with the wire wheel and put some penetrating oil in there but that looks okay well slight hiccup and i should have known the uh, american racing rims have a, a they're thicker at where the wheel where the lug goes so these bolts are not the right length to get the lugs the lug nuts back on so unfortunately got to stick those old wheels back on so flat tires for at least a couple days more um, but i am making a little bit of progress here I'm going one by one and putting penetrating oil in in hopes that I can actually try and start this thing very soon. Okay, with some penetrating oil in the pistons, uh, we're going to get this oil bath air cleaner removed. That's a little seized on there. I'm going to grab a wrench. Oh no, I got it. We're going to get this off and give the carburetor really good cleaning and uh, also disconnect the fuel line because I don't want to be pumping anything out of this gas tank into this vehicle because I'm assuming it's probably a hot mess in that tank. And we don't want to have any 40 year old gas, which at this point would be like turpentine sludging its way through those lines into the engine, fouling everything up. So off this goes and we'll clean up the carb. Okay, carburetor is cleaned up from the outside anyway. All of this linkage was completely frozen and I've working, been working at the last little bit with penetrating oil and a little bit of movement to get that going. So we got that going. The uh, accelerator pedal, it's still frozen. It's not giving me much of anything. So I've got that soaked in penetrating oil. We're gonna work that. So we've got some working bits on the carb again, but uh, Again, the uh, linkage for the throttle is just, see, it's kind of wanting to move. I've been soaking it for a bit there. I'm going to have to really work it to get it to go. But another step closer. Okay, well, the penetrating oil sits on the linkage. I'm going to tackle something I'm not super looking forward to. Well, and I'm also looking forward to it at the same time. Oh, I guess I'm not going in that way. Um, I need to get this interior cleaned out. And I'm super allergic to mice and I can see that there's, looks like there's been mice in here. So I've got to be careful. Um, I'm going to go grab a garbage bag and come back. So he said the trunk has been shut for many years. I have the key and I can see it's normally supposed to just pop open. Um, but I think that with all that debris and stuff in there, it just might need a little upward force. There we go. I guess he just didn't want to try that. 
So Key did unlock the trunk. He said it was frozen shut, but it could also be that uh, I just washed a lot of junk out of there. All right. Oh, what do we got going on in the trunk? What I should do, how old is this? Coach George Allen cornflake box. We got some new looking parts. Oh look, some new bits, gauges, lenses. That's for the grill. How long has this been in here? Does it even have a year on it? <laughs> Probably right around that time. Yeah, like 19, October 3rd, 1985 is when the cereal box is from. So I'm guessing after he got parked here, he started buying some parts thinking he was gonna fix it and never did. Okay, I'm gonna grab a couple bins I can put the good stuff in. Okay, I went and grabbed my bins. All this is, is good stuff. New in the box type stuff in here. Let's see what this is. I can get it open. Oh, looks like a, a brand new handle. Probably for the uh, emergency brake release or something. Anyway, it's new in the box. That's cool. All brand new gauges or uh, lenses for the gauges. Okay. Cereal box, that's garbage. Let's make sure there's nothing else in it. Let's throw that out. This box we have. Oh, it looks like um, upholstery. Oh, there's been mice in here, unfortunately. What do we have here? Oh, it would have been. What a shame. It would have been brand new upholstery. It looks like the mice have been at this a little bit. Actually, it's good on the inside. It's one seat back, maybe. You can see they've just annihilated this little corner here, unfortunately. was brand new seat upholstery. They probably still make it. I'm sure, I know they still make it. It's just sad to see that it got eaten up by varmints before it had a chance to be used. Yeah, that's no good. Too bad, what a shame. Okay, grabbed the rubber roll that was back there. And it appears to be a brand new floor mat. That's still going to be fine. Not much that wrong that can go there. It's been sitting in there a while, but we do have new, new floor mats. They need to be cleaned up though. And I like the trunk floor mat still in here underneath all this. It's like they used to have some kind of shag carpeting in here. Not anymore. We've got, there's the jack, or the, uh, uh, there's the jack, and I was going to say the jack handle, but also it's the tire iron. we got another box of possible parts here. A copy of Hemmings from April 1984. Let's see, what was a 1957 Chevy going for? Well, there we go, 1957 Chevy convertible. No rust and floor or trunk straight body in storage 14 years. $5,995. Seems like a bargain now. Or the 67 Camaro convertible power top. Not restored, well maintained condition. $4,200. Now, what were the exotics going for? Oh, to only have a time machine. Look, a 72 Dino Ferrari 246 GT. 95 points at Ferrari Concours event. $26,000. And you could get, uh, oh my gosh, Fossil Vega. Look, Fossil Vega convertible, rough but restorable, low mileage. Makes you wonder what cars we're looking at now in these sort of books are gonna be worth a lot. I look at this, a Ferrari 65 single headlight 330. That's the same exact one that I have. Conquer's condition, 25,000 firm. 
yeah, they've gone up a fair bit. Okay, as for the interior, well, oh, I see, there's the, uh, that's why you got the replacement handle, the Bakelite one broke off. Okay, I guess what we're gonna do here is start by getting the garbage bag over here. Ooh, a Technic's turntable. Oh, it's heavy. I'll start getting some of this stuff out of here. Um, well, no turntable, but it looks like there's metal, possibly uh, metal that they were going to use to patch the rust. They never did. Yeah, that's patch panels that they've kind of cut out. 1957 tarp. Okay, we have a car cover for it. So I'll put that in there. That's a new headliner that I found in the trunk too, which actually looked all, like it was okay. Okay, receipts, we're gonna wanna keep that. I don't wanna throw that out. New kick panel, or not new, but I mean, it was new, but a kick panel. Give a little bit of a vacuum. Or pretty much everything. Grab some of the papers off of the seat. We've got a uh, snow passenger tire guarantee from Sears. Well, considering how flat they are, well, I can't even see it, but there's no Sears for me to go back to. When were they installed? 1982, okay. Well, they lasted a good long time. We've got a milk sticker, because who doesn't want that? Real cool contest. Oh, first prize, 57 Chevy convertible. So if you advertise this on your car, you could have won a convert. Well, I'm sure he would have been happy with that. This window rubber channels. We've got some receipts. Westgate Chevrolet. So he's taking it to the dealership. Hose cap clips. 1983. So we're getting some work done on the car in the 80s from the looks of things. Well, this is important. That's the uh, original paperwork for the car. Well, at least for the insurance anyway. 1984, before it met its fate. It was able to push this door open from the other side. That lock is stuck, but you could open it with the handle. And yes, this does look like a whole bunch of old school upholstery. Which, that looks okay. That can probably be saved. Put that in the save bucket. And there's more. More upholstery. We've got uh, piping for the doors. This looks like some black vinyl. And this is... That's the uh, window piping. Oh, mouse tried to build a nest in there, but doesn't look like they got too far. Or didn't do too much damage. Let me get rid of the mouse nest and keep this window channel. Well, let's see what kind of condition the seats are in under here. Can't be any worse than these ratty old covers. And they're not. It's worn, but it's not terrible. Let's see if we can get these things off. Well, I've been clearing out the back seat and there was a box and that is the piece of trim that is broken on the front of the hood. So that's a replacement for this right there. And there's this other trim in there too. And there was also a brand new carpet set. So actually a lot of good parts, some brand new uh, door sills, scuff plates, lots of good stuff.
Okay, well that looks really not that much better. Definitely had a lot of family use in here. You got the mom and the dad and the kids in the back seat. Wore the little butt grooves in there. I mean, really, when this car was parked, it was only 20-something odd years old. It wasn't that old. And is there anything in the glove box? Yes. Brush. Lock de-icer. I mean, that explains why we've got a little bit of rust happening here. Because it was a winter-driven car. Matches from American Bar. Okay, well, oh, there's the broken piece of the handle. Okay, well, this morning I'm doing somewhat busy work because I'm waiting. I, I don't really want to try starting this engine until the uh, penetrating oil has a chance to kick in. Um, it looks a lot better with all that moss off of it, doesn't it? <laughs> we still have this giant dent back here to deal with. So I picked up a, um, it's a power auto body. It's called a Porta Power right there. Um, the idea is it has hydraulic clamps and pistons and stuff, and you can get it up underneath there and hopefully push that dent out. We're gonna try that. Um, and also, as it turns out, uh, the fellow that I bought the car from, uh, I was missing the proper lug nuts for the uh, Keystone rims, and he just so happened to have them. So he left them on the front step for me today. Again, I just bought this car yesterday, and uh, today I've already got the, uh, um, a lot of stuff done, <laughs> but we're going to get those wheels back on. My son should be back in a little bit. I know he wants to work on it with me, so, uh, I'm probably going to wait until he's there. Oh, great. There's a squirrel in my car. It's only been parked here for a short time and already I freaking got a squirrel in there. All right, buddy. How did it get in there? Come on. Come on. Get out, get out of the car. How did you get in there? Oh God, why is the weirdest stuff always happen? I have a squirrel, hopefully he's not been in there all night. It doesn't look all that stressed out. I might have to leave the uh, door open. I don't know if I accidentally closed him in the trunk. I had the trunk open for a while yesterday when I was trying to clean it. Yee! Well, I think I scared it off. Um, I don't see it in the car anymore. I've left the door open just in case. But as I'm driving away now, it dawns on me that I might just be inviting more squirrels to enter my vehicle. <laughs> I don't want that. Oh, okay, well, um, <laughs> that's the, I think that's Abigail's old pet squirrel. It had fallen out of a tree as a baby and she kind of raised it in her room in the cage and then we released it and now it's not afraid of us <laughs> or our human sense uh it's a problem don't have a pet squirrel <laughs> anyway i'll sort that out later on i don't think it's going to do any more damage than what's been done on the interior of that car so i'll open the door and hopefully it will just leave um but uh, i'm off to go get a new battery right now for the vehicle <laughs> Uh, that's random. I was not expecting to see a little surprised looking squirrel face staring at me this morning. Okay, off I go. Okay, so as you guys can tell, there is a pretty massive dent on this side. Now, um, I've picked up what's called a Porta Power unit. It's not a Porta Potty, Porta Power. It's a hydraulic um, ram, basically. You have different attachments like the duck bill here, which I'm going to try using first to spread that. Um, as you pump it, kind of like a hydraulic jack, it opens up the duck bill, or in that case, it has pistons that push apart. And the idea is that you can use that to help push this metal back into place. I have no idea if I'll be able to make a difference, but I'm sure going to try. Okay, progress support. Well, I've got the majority of the dent in this area taken out. I don't know if you can kind of see. Ignore the fact there's Bondo, but you can see it's almost body line there. The uh, problem is now this section up here, I can't access from under the wheel well. So I am going to um, take the door panel off on the inside and see if I can go that way. Okay, I am making some progress, yes, but 
there's two spaces, one here and one there that need to be pushed from the inside out. I've taken the door panel off and this little access panel off so I can uh, get in there. And uh, one of two things, one, I can try using my foot and just push it out with my foot or I can hook up all that apparatus to the hydraulic. So I'm probably gonna crawl in there and try my foot first. All right, prepared to show you guys a bit of an update. I replaced the uh, broken trim on the front with the one that was in the back. So no more giant chunk missing out of there. Uh, this side of the car actually doesn't look half bad. You know, we've got the American Racing Keystone style rims on there. Not much for dents and, you know, you got your rocker rust, but overall this side of the car looks decent. Walk around to the other side, that's where we had the giant crater, but now, I don't know if you can tell, the dent is gone, more or less. It, clearly is going to need a little bit more work but I popped it back out you know an afternoon's work to undo uh, 40 years worth of challenge um, you know it's kind of sad it got parked because of that dent because honestly that wasn't that difficult of a fix to get it popped back out again having the right tools and since then mother nature has turned this into a super legeria with all the rust on the bottom but um, I think we're at the spot now where I can actually get this thing to try and start certainly is looking uh, much better than it did when I picked it up. But the question is, will it crank? And to test that, I got a new battery. Now I'm gonna try cranking this over. I'm actually gonna disconnect the uh, old fuel line here and we'll see if anything happens. I'm really hoping it's not seized or stuck, but who knows? And I guess while I'm in here, I can play the game of what works and what doesn't. Where's the seat adjustment? There we go. Do I have a radio? Won't know for a minute there. Oh, listen to that. It does crank. It does indeed. Actually, it sounds half decent. Just wanna make sure it's not in gear, because that could be a surprise. Hey guys, I just splashed a little bit of gas in the carb, and this will hopefully be the first time this has started um, since 1983. Let's find out. 84. Come on. I need a little bit more gas. Okay, let's try this again. Ready? And... There we go. I only had enough gas in the carburetor to run it for a second, but she runs. <laughs> She's alive. That's outstanding. I want to do it again. basically just burnt off whatever gas was in there. But, but it survived. runs. Yeah. It's a living vehicle again. So not bad for a couple days work? No, it is not. Yep. Well, if I could get it to run off the tank, I'd have a running car probably a driving car too. Being a standard, it probably wouldn't take that much to make this thing go. So that's a pretty good, successful first 24 hours with this vehicle. Well, that's it guys. I guess to answer the age old question, will it run? The answer is typically yes. Otherwise we wouldn't put these videos out if it was a big fail. This car sitting since 1984 um, now runs again. Penetrating oil uh, in the pistons overnight really seemed to help. Um, we did try turning the fan yesterday and it seemed a little stiff, so I was not so sure it was gonna start, but sure enough, started right up. Sounds good, didn't even blow a bunch of smoke or anything. Like he said, the engine was rebuilt when it was parked 
Um, a testament to the engineering of these old six cylinder engines, pretty well bulletproof. Um, the extra trim on the front makes it look a lot better. The tires not being flat helps a lot and it's a two door post. Now it's kind of surprising to find a 1957 Chevy one owner vehicle sitting on somebody's driveway after 40 years because these cars have been desirable since like the 70s. I don't know, when did Grease come out? Grease Lightning? These cars have been popular since the mid 70s. So there's no reason why somebody over all those 40 years shouldn't have probably bought it off that driveway. But I guess maybe they just never knocked on the door. That guy was me. So um, we got into a state now where we can decide what we're gonna do with it. But uh, I think pretty fun video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It uh, is nice to hear something run after that long. And um, yeah, so far so good. I don't have brakes. Uh, it does shift, it does move. Um, it's not running off the tank yet. Those are all fixable things. So guys, thanks for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to do that. We'll see you all soon. And as always, bye for now. Bye everybody. Thank you.